Live from Hickory, it's country-ish election night edition. <laughs> Hit it, Alan. Get the country boy, and he's making it good. He was Jaws underdog, dressed in beaver rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his green and headed for Southern Cal. Wound up the TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last, cause he's in Hickory. That's right, I'm from Hickory, and I'm happy about it. What up, bumpkins? How you doing? You're about to watch and or listen to episode 49 of Country-ish Election Night Edition. We got a lot, a lot of stuff to do. Normally we're very, very funny podcasts, but we know there's a, there's a big election going on. We're not going to ignore that during the show, okay? So we've got an intern, Isaiah, who's going to run in here from time to time and give us updates on the big race. Now, when I say big race, we all know what I'm talking about. We're, we're, we're talking about the big race for the Soil and Water Conservation District Supervisor right here in Catawba County. It is heated. We have opinions about it. Stay tuned. We also are going to play a Screen Actors Guild residual game. We've got an interesting feel-good story that I want you to see. Um, Based right here in Hickory, it does go along with the political theme of tonight. Um, we've got an expert zooming in to tell us all about the race. And uh, very funny comedian Sean Conroy is going to zoom in. And we have a great small town news story out of uh, Haynes, Florida. I don't want to step on that. But we got a lot to do. Don't go anywhere. We're going live. Intern Isaiah, like I said... He's reading your comments, so from time to time I'll go to him, and he'll give us a good, interesting comment, but more importantly, he's going to give us updates on the big race. But let me go ahead and introduce you to, what we, to the man in the room. Let me walk you around the room. We got one guy in here. He's a very, uh, very tall man. Comes in around 27 feet 3 inches tall. Mm. We dug a hole for him to... St We're on the third level here, third story at the Jackson Creative Studios, and we dug a hole for him to stand in so he could just be eye level with me. Uh, he also goes by the uh, Southeastern Man of Mystery. I want, it, I want you all to welcome my buddy, Sebastian. How you doing, buddy? Great, man. Serious night tonight. Big, Serious. Big, big night. Big night. Uh, big first night. time in a while I've seen you in a suit or in a tie yep. and a dress shirt. You look good. Thank you. Um, thanks for being here on this uh, crazy night. We've got lots to do. I don't know what you want to do first. Um, do you want to talk about what's going on in the big race, or do you want to do a quick uh, update on my weekend? I was in Toledo, yeah. Ohio. Yeah, tell me how that went. You, you chased a hurricane? I, no? Yeah, so I had a gig in Toledo, Ohio at the Funny Bone uh, last weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and... They canceled one show Friday. They canceled one show Saturday. Normally, I do five shows. Numbers weren't great. People are afraid to come out. Halloween, COVID, the election, a lot going on. <clears throat> and I was sitting here looking, uh, thinking I might just not make this one. And then a hurricane comes. Here comes mm. Hurricane Zeta. Yeah. Zeta? Zeta. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like... Power's going out all over Hickory, and I know the next day my flight, flying out of Charlotte, going to Toledo, I'm like, what are the odds I'm going to even make it there? Am I really going to go there for this? But I made it, 
It turned out to be a great gig, and I want to say thank you to everybody who was in Toledo, Ohio, at the Funny Bone. We had a good time. Lots of ginger beard masks everywhere. Oh, I stole yeah. a lot of those, Yeah, so that was good. Um, and we ended up selling some tickets. I also want to thank Rodney Carrington, because desperately in the last hour, I'm like, Rodney, I need help selling some tickets. <laughs> Is there anything you can do? Can you send out a tweet, a Facebook post? He's like, I got you. And he's got over a million people on his Facebook yeah. page. And I think that helped with the numbers. So namaste, God bless you, Rodney Carrington. It was a good weekend. Um, also, I want to plug a, another tour date while I'm at it. Okay. Um, Charleston, South Carolina. If you're in Charleston, South Carolina, if you know anybody in Charleston, South Carolina, tell them to come see me November the 20th. At the Charleston Music Hall. Okay. Um, so that was fun. And um, let's talk about the race real quick. Because I got... <clears throat> we got our favorites. Here's what's going on. Um, yeah, you need to tell the audience. Sebastian and I... We, we don't agree on everything. No. Uh, mostly, most oh, yeah. of the time I agree with yeah. you. You're a good friend, but I feel like I can have a disagreement with you and still be your friend. Yeah. That's kind of the theme of tonight. Well, we're on the two different sides of the political spectrum. I think so. Um, and right now we're kind of uh, at odds. We're button heads with who we think should be the new soil and water conservation board of supervisors. Okay. Now you've got this dude, David Caldwell, who's already in there. Now we yeah, can we, agree. We can't agree on this. We don't like ourselves from David Caldwell. No. This dude's got to go. All right? Now, um, he's not even, like, in an interview with the Hickory Day the Record, he's like, I don't even want to talk to you people. Well, he's, you understand? he's, he's got, he's, he's, he's like a, one of these lifetime long soil right. water conservationists. He's like, I'm already here. He, he doesn't have to prove anything. You. Yeah, you need me. Yeah. So... He's, he's, he's the thing we're probably only going to agree on tonight. The, okay. Now, the, there are two guys that are trying to get his seat right now. You've got Joseph Williamson and Jonathan Moretz. I personally like Jonathan Moretz. Now, here they are. Now, if you're watching this at home, Al, the Alan Jackson has put up on the screen the three guys. Well... These are images of the three names of the people who are vying for the Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors district chairman representative thing. Um, here you can see on the left a picture of Dave Caldwell. Now, I do want to say this. That is not the Dave Caldwell who is currently the Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors seat. That's not him. That's not him. We did some research. The Alan Jackson Googled David Caldwell, soil and water, blah, blah, blah. There's no, there's no picture. Yeah. There's no, we, we can't find an image of so him. He's a stand in. He's a stand in well, well, picture. He, did he is David Caldwell. He just in David Caldwell. Caldwell. Yeah, and, and that's the first picture that pops up. So <laughs> we just want yeah. to make clear that's not the David Caldwell, it is a David Caldwell. Much like behind That's the That's why they star beside That's the asterisk. The asterisk, yes. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Good job, the Alan Jackson. Yeah. You put an asterisk, it's all... It's... Well, much like there are two Alan Jacksons. Yes. There's more than one David Caldwell. Yeah. All right. Now, here's your guy in the middle. Big Joseph Williams. This is who you love. Oh, yes. And this I is love Jonathan Moretz. Now, who wants to go first? Do you want me to make a case? Yeah. I, or do you want you know, to make a ahead. case? Go ahead. I mean, you know, tell me... Because I looked this dude up, you know, I... I, I I do my research, buddy. Okay. Jonathan Moretz is a veteran. Hmm. First of all, I mean, oh, well, give shout it out. out let's truth. shout out to that veteran. Come on, Jonathan Moretz. We'll give him a shout out for that. Um, he's a young dude. I like, I like the young energy. We got dude. a lot of old people running around in the uh, political spectrum these well, days. We like to call them wise, but if you want to call them old, that's I, fine. I need some new bloods, what I'm saying. This dude's 32 years young. It lives right here in Hickory. Um, prior military experience, current manufacturing uh, a manager. Okay, um, he's a proven leader with a drive for success. 
Uh, <laughs> look, here's his past jobs. Manufacturing supervisor at Baxter International Incorporated. Oh, manufacturing supervisor. So Inter- he's international. International. Okay. He's a production supervisor at Corning. Mm. Okay, Corning. Big, big uh, company right here in Hickory. Yeah. Um, has his own business. For three years, business owner of Moritz Landscaping and Grading LLC. And he was an operations manager in the U.S. Army. I don't see any reason why this man should not be the new um, Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors. Jonathan Ritz, I'm here to say Jonathan Reap supports Jonathan Moritz. Because you have the same name. Well, that doesn't hoit. Let me tell you about my guy, and then, uh, then I'll go back and talk about your guy in a minute. Okay. My guy, Joseph Williamson. Yeah. First of all. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at his shirt. He, he Googled my symptoms. Turned out that he just needed more weed today. No, he needed what to say. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I Googled my symptoms. Turns out I just need more flowers. More but flowers. It, I'm sorry. I misread it. Look, maybe. weed, flowers. Weed, flowers. Are the, well, that was going to be my argument. That's, you want oh. a hippie in here? Yeah. Huh? Well. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Williamson's retired. That means he's got time to do this job. He's okay. not trying to manage Corning and do all the things over there. Jonathan's probably got a girl. I don't know if he's got a girl or not. Oh, he's he married, married man. Married man. Good, wholesome married man. Good, wholesome married man. Good, wholesome married man. Yeah. He's busy. Right. That's 32 true. and busy. Raising kids. Mm-hmm. Little yard apes running around. You got to take care of them. Okay. Look at Mr. Williamson. Retired. He's working part time as a merchandiser for Plant Partners Incorporated. Okay. Plant partners. Wow. I don't think they're international, but they're incorporated. <laughs> when you say plant partners, yeah. do you mean plant as in a big uh, facility that has lots of operations? I'm or thinking of a couple of people who are plant. plant. They're planting stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that would be good in this field. And then he also works during the uh, seasonal at Lowe's Hardware. Oh, American I can see this guy at Lowe's. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want. He wants to work at the flowers in Lowe's. Hmm. He's a member of the Holsgrove Baptist Church, past member of North Carolina Nursery Association. This is my guy, dude. This is my guy. Where's the server? Where's the emails? Do you know about the conspiracy on this dude? Yes. How many ex-wives does he have? Huh? Well, how What's many, going on? How many does he have? Why is, he, why, why is, he, why is his picture so fuzzy? Let's, let's talk about little Joe. Little okay. Joe? Little Joe. You know Joe Nathan? Little Joe Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about him. Well, you look. This dude's facial hair is on point. That's what I'm worried about. He spends all his time on his facial hair. This guy is out there working the soil. Got his hands in the dirt. He's got his hands in the dirt. He's not worried about how cute he looks. Look at that little spike in the top. Well, why don't we ask the people watching us live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter? All right. Uh, I'm asking you, who do you want to be? Who is your vote for the next Soil and Water <laughs> Conservation Board of Supervisors? And let's Do you want Joseph Williamson? Big Joe. We call him Big Joe. Big His Joe. His friends and, and, and... Or do you want Jonathan Moretz? Not Little Joe. We can all agree that Joe David Nathan. Caldwell has got to well, go. Joe, David Caldwell's got to go. Let me look at that. Look at that neck tattoo. I mean, although I would say if you're going to if you're going to be... The next I mean, Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors, <laughs> and you're going to have a neck tattoo. Maybe that does look like a good it's, sort of that's an ivy lattice. Uh, ivy, thank yeah, you. It's going <laughs> up. Once you you can't. It's kudzu, maybe. That's right. <laughs> kudzu. <laughs> Leave it in the comment <laughs> section. Who do you want to be the next? And uh, we're going to check it throughout yeah. the show because no f- we know people. Uh, that's what they want. And I'm sick of th- Isaiah. Do you have an update for us? Yes, I have. Can you bring us an update right now? Okay, so intern Isaiah is going to bring us updates from time to time on what's going on. Thank you, Isaiah. I appreciate you. You look good tonight. Good job. All right, right now, um, this just in. This is breaking news. We got the we got the uh, current update in the polls right now. Okay. What's Joseph go- Williamson zero percent. David Caldwell zero percent. Jonathan Ritz zero percent. Okay, people, but you need to get your vote. It's early. It's early. It's, it's only early. 8.15. We got plenty of time. 
Thank you, intern Isaiah. He's going any, to, anytime I call for it, you run in here, okay? Yes, sir. It's a very important night. I don't want you dilly dallying or hesitating. Any interesting comments? In fact, uh, now that I've brought it up, um, Sean Kelly said that we look sharp tonight. That, well, thank you, That's Sean important. Kelly. Appreciate it. He's right. He's, he or she? Sean, I think it's a dude. Oh. I think it's a guy. You, either way, you look great. Just Thanks. be happy with that news. Yeah. Um, so the Hickory Daily Record did interview these guys. Okay. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you my you, guy. Your guy. All right? They asked Jonathan Moretz, mm -hmm. the future Soil and Water Conser Conservation Board supervisor, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they asked him, what qualifies you to serve as Soil and Water Conservation Supervisor, and what would you hope to achieve in the role? Listen to how my boy answers okay. this question. Tell us what Jim Nathan right. said. I have a broad range of experiences I bet it's throughout a broad. my professional life. I bet life. it's a broad. Oh, you want to go there? Yeah. You want to go, go with all go the go broads? Ahead. Talk about the broads. Listen, he says, I have visited several different areas and cultures throughout the world. I have experienced both successful and failed ways. See, it's important to learn from your mistakes and your failures and other people's failures. He's learned from that. Uh, of managing environmental control measures, I have a strong conservative outlook on sustaining our environment. I believe strongly in land and water conservation and doing our part to provide a sustainable environment for those that come after us. He's looking after your kids, man. Man, this Not is... Not just him. This is fake soil news, man. It's fake soil <laughs> news. We know the dirt on John. So look... We're going to keep the people updated. We know that's what the main concern is tonight. We know that's a big race going on. It's a big Don't worry. Race. We got you. We got intern Isaiah running in here from time to time, giving us updates. Okay. Um, let's move on. It's time to play America's favorite. Oh, wait. Do we? Oh, should we open package. this? I got a package. Ooh. Alan, how many people do we have on hold for the Screen Actors Guild residual check game? Six people on hold. I don't know if I can keep them waiting much longer. We're going to get to the un to the unboxing of the package later from a fan. What's in the box? I don't know what's in the box. Stay tuned to find out what's in this box. Can everyone see this, though? There's a box. It's cute. Okay. Now, as you know, yeah. I've done some acting in my day. I've, done, I've been in some sitcoms. I've been in some movies, commercials. I've even done some adult films I'm not proud of. We don't have to talk about it. No, it's not, not on election night. But they have to pay you when these things air. And I, it's called a residual check. And um, we made a game out of it. I've got one, two, I've got five envelopes right here. And I'm going to open this envelope. I'm going to tell you and the listeners what it's for, where it's airing. And you guess the amount. If you get it exactly right, I'll give you this check. Closest person wins the game. If you get it exactly right, I give you the check. It's a game that we like to call... How much is that Screen Actors Guild residual? Check. All right. Good not job, bad, buddy. Not bad tonight. I'll let you pick, gonna pick which number. Envelope. Now, let me show you something okay. about these uh -oh. envelopes. Yeah, I mean, they got the names on. I'm a, I'm a watcher. All right. I'm a watcher. I'll let you choose. You can go if by weight. Says, you can go by name. If it says Grin Reaper, mm -hmm. Incorporated International. Boom. Another reason why me and John Moretz are like this. Oh, yeah. We're worldwide, dude. We're international. Mm. Okay, here's the check. I'm going to open it is. the check. And open that's it the with sound expectations. of me opening the check. Okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. It's a check. It is a check. Not Sometimes a bill. I get worried that this might be a bill. And if it's a bill, we would continue to play the game and see if people would who, guess. Who has to pay the bill? And if they get it exactly, they have to pay the bill. Yep. All right. This is a check for um, an episode of Blackish. Ooh. That I was on. Dare I say, our namesake of country ish got the idea from black ish, except we're country ish. I did an episode of blackish. It's called Martin Luther Skiing Day. Did you ever see that yeah, one? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I actually did watch that one. I, I played a guy named Whitey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, it was funny. It's a good episode, so I'm very happy with it. And this is for basic cable, internet rental, electronic sell-through, and pay TV. One, mm. two, three, four different things. One check. One check. Yep. Okay, and the gross does a amount. It's, it's one check. All right. Sebastian, the southeastern man of mystery, who stands at 72 inches feet tall. I forgot what I said. How much is a Screen Actors Guild research check? I'm going to go with $17.87. Okay. $17.87. That's an interesting guess. Yes. Now, have you been paying attention at home? We had a run of just, uh, was it eastbound and down? Yeah. Checks that were just one after the other. Something totally different. So yeah. your guess is if you're playing at home, adjust. Because I said it's airing on one, two, three, four different things. Yeah. Okay. Your guess was $17.87. You were locked in. What kind of lock would you like? The, the, the spizzle lock. Spizzle lock? Yeah. You're spizzle locked. Thank you. All right, um, the Alan Jackson. Do we want intern Isaiah playing along with us? Yeah. All right, intern Isaiah. I want to say a couple of things real quick. You look great tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you dressing up on this very important night. What is your guess? So last time Sebastian played, I undercut him by two dollars with an old Price Is Right trick. <laughs> so today <laughs> I'm gonna use another Price Is Right <laughs> trick. And go seventeen dollars and eighty eight cents. Seventeen dollars. Oh, what a what a douche move. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you put that vest on. You put the vest on, and, and look you got what happens. Look at that. It's like the members only jacket of vest. You put it on, <laughs> something happens. Uh, Google All right, that. Well, your spizzle lock. <laughs> seventeen eight. Seventeen eighty eight. Oh. D. Allen Jackson, I know we got people on hold. Let's open up the phone lines. Let's get some guesses up in here. All right, this is John Reap. You're live on election night on Country Ish. Who am I talking to? Samantha. Samantha Don Kingston, super fan, supporter. We love you. How are you? I'm doing good. Just got back from North Carolina. You did. Were you here yes. looking at the leaves? <laughs> no, we were at the beach celebrating our five-year anniversary on uh, Halloween. Oh, that's oh, congratulations, congratulations, and thank you for calling in. All right, we got a lot of people on hold, so let's get right to your guest, Samantha Don Kingston. What do you got for me? Forty-five fifty. Mm. Okay, very good. So that's a good Forty-five dollars and fifty cents locked in. <laughs> The Alan Jackson, let's move on. Who else do we have in the bullpen waiting on hold? You are live right now on the Countryish Podcast election night. Who am I talking to? Talking to Shane Flint from Virginia. Shane Flint from Virginia. Good to hear from you again, sir. You've been listening to the show. You're on hold. Give me a good educated guess, Shane Flint. Fifty-one dollars and forty-seven cents. Fifty-one dollars and no, the Allen Jackson was that more or less than what? More. That's more than what? Okay, all right. More than the then, Samantha. Okay, mm. Shane, you're locked in. <laughs> Let's move on. How many? You want to? I, if we if we move this quick, Alan, we can get a lot of people. You're on the phone with John Reap. Who am I talking to? You're talking to Mr. Sean Kelly, Sebastian. Mr. Sean Kelly. Don't you get it twisted, son. Yes, sir. How you spell that, Sean? <laughs> S-H-A-U-N or W-N? S-H-A-U-N. Oh. S- S-H-A-U-N. H-A-U-N. It's always about a U. These guys, it's always hmm. about them, you. Well, let me, <laughs> couple couple things. I want to congratulate him on not being a S-E-A-N. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I do know a S H A W N. Yeah, cool guy. Very cool guy. Yeah, Dude I know guy. that too. What's up with the U, man? Who made this decision? I want to talk to your parents. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I guess my parents, yeah. But yeah. they did give me a good middle name. My middle name is David. So. David. Ooh, Ooh, that's a very good middle name. Yeah. I happen to know a guy. That's my name. Yeah, my middle name, too. All right. Yeah, I know. Sean, you've been on hold. You've been listening. Give yeah. me a good guess, buddy. I'm going to go with $37.59. Thirty-seven dollars and fifty-nine cents. You're locked in. Sixty-nine. 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 Of course. Gotcha. Of course. I see course. what you did there. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right. Put him on hold. Oh, he's a Sean. All right. Let's do one more of the Alan Jackson. I think we got time for one or two more. Yeah? Okay. You're live on the Countryish podcast. Who am I talking to? It's your old friend, Roseanne. Roseanne. Roseanne! All right. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Well, today's my uh, my middle child's birthday and my youngest grandson's birthday. It's on the same day? On the same day, yeah. Election that was my, day. one of my youngest daughter's. My youngest daughter's birthday present to her middle sister was having her my grandson on the same day. Wow. You all planned that out, huh? That's very good. <laughs> Congratulations. I guess she did. Congratulations, number one. And number two, mm-hmm. you've got two birthdays mm-hmm. on the same day. Yeah. It's election day. you got to choose one. Which mm-hmm. one do you love more? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't um, answer that. I the it's gr- a trap. I can't spoil the- <laughs> <laughs> There's no correct answer You only got to spoil that. your grandkids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, she loves the grandkids more. They yeah. all do. They yeah, all yeah, they I have Hey, I, I, you, I heard last last week. I heard the. Uh, I heard everything on last week. Um, you played that uh, clip that I sent Elliot, but I haven't heard a response back from Elliot yet. Elliot? He's ghosting me. I think. Elliot's yeah. tied up right now. He's not even here. He's supposed to be here. Elliot, for those of you just listening or tuning in for the first time, we have two interns. We have Isaiah and we have Elliot. Um, Elliot could not be with us because his wife has some medical issues. But don't worry, uh, he'll get back to you eventually. And we did play the football one last week, and it was great. And thank you for that. Yeah. But let's let's talk yeah. about the oh, moment at have, hand. Okay, I'll give you, yeah, I got to give you a sound too. <laughs> but I got to give you the amount. Um, I put down thirty one oh three. Okay. Thirty one dollars three cents. Got it. Now, Roseanne, would you like to come up with uh-huh. a brand new lock sound? A lock sound. Well, Ooh, you remember gosh. how last time you gave us a cranberry? Yeah. I'm wondering yeah, if you yeah, have yeah. another yeah, sound that, that you can use the, as a locking uh, to lock in people's guesses. Gosh. Don't on the spot. You don't have Ooh, to gosh. do it now. You don't have, have to, to do it now. It out. But I do know that you did you just say you have a new sound? Yeah. Proceed. It's an it's an it's an animal. It goes like this. It's a. Can you figure out what it is? Um, I think that, I think it's a squirrel. But let's see what Sebastian says. Yep, yep, it is. It <laughs> is. Mind. It is. You're right. <laughs> So no matter what, you were going to be wrong. I was going to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you were squirrel locked in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Put her on hold. All right, the Ellen Jackson. Let's do one more, and let's pick a. We're going to do two more. All right, well let's do two more. All right, you are live on the podcast with John Reap. Who am I talking to? You're talking to Kayla Reap from Charlotte. Kayla Reap, my my niece? <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. This is my brother's daughter. Mm. Uh, she <laughs> She's lucky that she inherited my beautiful ginger hair. I know. She's she's a lot better looking beautiful. ginger than you. Yeah. she, uh, yeah, she It looks better on her. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to. I agree with you there. Kayla. <laughs> all right, Go Kayla. On. First of all, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, who do you got winning the Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors? Are you Team Williamson or Team Moretz? Come on, Kayla. Um, <laughs> no pressure. Um, 
Big joke. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel comfortable answering this question. That's fine. That's uh, fine. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. put my family on the spot. <laughs> good. Good political safe yeah, answer, oh, Kayla. Yeah. I like that. Thanks. All right. What is your guess? Um, I guess thirty-seven ninety-five. Thirty-seven ninety-five. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Allen Jackson. You write that down. Okay. You are. What, what kind of lock would you like, Kayla? Would you like a squirrel lock or a cranberry <laughs> lock or a swizzle lock? Let's do a swizzle. She's locked in. <laughs> Put her on hold, Alan. All right, we got one more in the bank. Hello, you're on the podcast with me, John Reed. Who am I talking to? How are you, good sir? This is Isaac Owens from Hickory. Isaac Owens. All right, I don't think you've from called him. From Hickory. Into- from, from Hickory. That's right. How dare me. <laughs> yes, sir. Good. Thank you for calling in. Um, are you born and raised in Hickory? Uh, sawmills right outside of Hickory. We call no, it Hickory. No, about some sawmills in the tater hole. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. What high school did you go to? South Caldwell. South Caldwell, of course. South Caldwell, of, of course. <laughs> what year did you graduate? Of course. Did, what, what year did you graduate, buddy? Uh, 2001. 2001. Mm. Okay, yeah, you're a little bit younger than me. Um, but you've been Just listening. A bit. I appreciate you calling in. First of all, thank you very much. Um, yes, sir. I would love to hear what you think the amount of this residual check is. I'm going to say fifty eight dollars and four twenty cents. Just fifty eight forty two for sure. <laughs> and that's the self calling education coming out right there. <laughs> Making yes, sawmills proud. <laughs> I love you gotta it. push it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a heat and air technician. Alan, I'm not a dumbass. You Alan, know, what did you know. write down? I don't even. Uh, 80, what, what did he say? $58, 58 and 42 cents. And 420 cents, he said. Yeah, I love it. No, yeah. 42 cents. Oh, I thought it was 42. I thought but he was 42 friendly. I heard you say 420. He's trying to get to 420 in there. He's got to say 420 when you're on the radio, but it's $58 and 42 cents. Got you. You're locked in. <laughs> All right. Hey, Isaac. Go ahead, Sebastian. Uh, yes, sir. Make sure, since you're 420 friendly, that you vote for my candidate, mm. Big Joe. He is he is going to be behind. This is true. The 420 friendly weed. He he's got a shirt that says. I cannot weed on argue it. with you on this point. Yeah. So make sure you, are you have you voted tonight, Isaac. I do know that your guy. We mean make What's sure the point being four twenty friendly when you ain't got oh, yeah. the money to buy none? I, <laughs> I know that your guy, <laughs> Joseph Williamson, that's, he's a tax guy. Loves himself. We don't like taxes so around here, Jane. Uh, all right, everybody, good. Guesses are all all on the table. Time to pick a winner. Time to reveal how much is that residual? Is check? this Screen Actors Guild residual check? Well, I do want to say something. Something has happened that has never happened in the game. Oh. Um, someone got two digits exactly right in a row. 87. Hmm. Do you remember your guess? 1787. So there's an 87 in here. But I went too low. Did you? I think. <laughs> Let's find out. This check is for... $87.24. Everybody undercutted me. Alan? I think. Isaac. Isaac! Congratulations. Congratulations, Isaac. Ding, ding, ding from Hickory, by golly. That's right. Sawmills, uh, sawmills with the good guess. You won the game, but you didn't win yes, the sir. check. Yes, sir. But you got bragging rights. You have defeated the reigning champion, Samantha Dong Kingston, and now you are the rightful owner of the Screen Actors Guild residual check game. What, what are you awesome. going to do? How are you going to celebrate tonight? Uh, watching the lamestream media put on the results till <laughs> however long it takes. Don't worry. We have <laughs> uh, updates. We have results. In fact... The Alan Jackson, am I am I correct in saying this? We have an update right now. Yes, we have. Intern update. Isaiah, get in here. I don't want people waiting on this news. We have an update right now. Who is running? Who is winning? 
uh, who's in the lead of the Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors, what everyone wants to know. No. Here's an update. Thank you, Isaiah. Right now. Whoo, my gosh. This is not good. This is not good. It's early still. It's still early? It's early still. Huh? Oh, God. are you getting? Oh. Coming in with 19%, 19.06% is Williamson. Big Joe. That's your boy. Big Joe's my boy. Coming in at 28%, Moretz. What? Unfortunately, Caldwell, 51.69%. <sighs> Folks, we got it. We, we need to get. The, we need to get there. out there. Where's time still? We need to get David Caldwell out of that seat, and right now he's winning. So let's shake hands on this. Yeah. Let's both agree that we need to encourage people just to go out right now. Hit Is the... it too late, Alan? No. It's... Mm -mm. <laughs> they can still vote. It's never too late. <laughs> it's too late. Put your feet on the dirt what... and get out there and vote. Come on, Moretz. That's all I'm saying. Thank you for the update, um, Isaiah, intern Isaiah. I do appreciate that. And that's how you play the Screen Actors Guild residual check game. And, gosh, that's I'm kind of devastated right now with those yeah. assault numbers. I'm kind of rattled, if I'm being honest with you. Um, the Alan Jackson. Do we want to go ahead and op open the box? We want to save the box. We want to go to the next segment. Um, let's open the box. All right. From time to time, people send us gifts, and uh, we will gladly take your gifts. I hear someone on the phone. Excuse me. I'm gassy. This is from a fan, I think a supporter, Pam Nance. She listens to the podcast, both this one and Heffern and Reap. Follows me doing the walkie-talkie times with Momosa. Mm -hmm. And she says, hi, John, for your dad, mom, and you. Hope you enjoy it. Happy to support your podcast. Much love, Pam Nance. So let's see what is in here. It's from Southern Supreme. What you know about Southern Supreme? Southern Supreme is a wonderful brand. Let's find out what's International in brand. Okay, we got some confetti. I'll throw this in the air when Jonathan Moretz... He's going to make a comeback. He'll make a comeback. What do you think this is? What's in the box? What do you think this is? Look at that, dude. Look at that. Oh, Alan, I know you're mad as hell. We're making a mess. There's confetti. We'll, we'll make one of the interns clean it up. <laughs> Look at all this stuff. We've got Southern Supreme Fruitcake Maple Crispy Peanuts. Yes. We've got... Southern Supreme Fruitcake Cookies. What does that one say? It says. Oh, get your readers. <laughs> this one is Cheese Florets Fruitcakes and more. This is Skinny Milk Chocolate Almond Bark. My gosh, it just keeps getting better. We've got Southern Supreme Nutty Fruitcake. Uh, that's all you. That's that for you. That sounds like me. I'm a nutty fruitcake. Um, there might be one more thing in here. Yep. And we've got, oh my gosh. Soap? Bear Creek Lazy Turtle Southern Supreme Handmade Chocolate. Mm. Wow. Let me tell you something. This is my favorite time of year, and it's also not my favorite time of year because uh, your boy's gaining weight. That's you? me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, look, trick or treat, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Look at this stuff. Maybe we need to do, uh, instead of walkie-talkies, maybe do with Running With John. <laughs> yeah. That's Running With John. Run he can't with speak John. right now because he can't <laughs> breathe, but it would be funny. Yeah. All right. That's not a bad idea. I do need to uh, yeah. take my health a little bit more seriously. But thank you, Pam Nance. Pam Nance. Now, technically, it's for my dad, mom, and me. Yeah. So my dad loves fruitcakes. Hmm. I don't know any other human being on the planet who loves fruitcakes. I don't either. My dad loves them, and Pam Nance knew that, and she sent these. So thank you, Pam Nance. We appreciate you. Um, all righty then. I think we should move on a little bit. Um, 
The Alan Jackson, I believe it's time for a, a feel-good story. Yeah. All right. So check this out. Okay. Um, and don't worry. I know for those of you that are watching this, we've got um, a professional that's going to zoom in and talk to us about the election. Yeah. We've got a little bit of uh, Heffern and Reap to show you that I think is hilarious. We've got a very funny interview with Sean Conroy coming up and in small town news. Weird, crazy story. I think you said out of Haines, Florida. Don't want to. Yep. Yeah. Haines City. Okay. So just know that. But it's time to get to this video. It feels good. Like when I moved back home to Hickory, you know, I've only been here a couple of years now. Um, I kept noticing the same homeless guy walking around. And he looked very, very familiar to me. And I wanted to see what I could do to help out or get to know the guy, and, and here's what happened. So just check out right. this, and we'll be right back. Check this out. Okay, so we are on the hunt for this uh, homeless guy I see all the time. Oh, dude, 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 right there he is. Right there he is. Hang on, hold on. Pull up, right here. Excuse me. Hey, buddy. Help. What you want? You got any money? Can we talk to you for a second? Huh? Oh, it smells good in here. What was that Bojangles? Just real quick. Yeah, I'll let you talk to me for a minute. I'll get one of them uh, chicken biscuits. All right. Okay, Bojangles. Hey, man. How you doing? What is this? Uh, Thank you. Um, this chicken sausage. Mm -hmm. All right. What is this? Tea? Okay. Mm. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, what's your name? Ron. Just Ron? Yeah, just Ron. No last name? I never knowed my last name. Never got it. I have no idea. Do you live here in Hickory? Technically, yes. I live in Brookford. I live in that old uh, Shuford Mills yarn plant. You know about that? That's, um, well, they're slowly taking it down, brick by brick. But what they don't know is at night, I put them back up there. I build the wall right back myself. But uh, other than that, it is a dump. It is the worst plant in Hickory. Some said it's the worst plant in all of North Carolina. It's a total disaster. But uh, that's where I live. I live there with uh, about 30 stray cats. I like to help out cats. My favorite one is uh, little Kofifi. I love Kofifi. Kofifi! Might be down in here. Kofifi! But that's just, uh, that's the kind of guy I am. You know, I like helping stray animals. If I see a cat, I'll just grab that pussy cat, take it home with me. What about your family? Do you, uh, do you know your mom or your dad, or do you have any brothers or sisters? Well, I have the worst family. Believe me, this I can tell you, absolutely disgusting. I never, I never know my dad. I have no idea who he is. Uh, my mama raised me until I was about five, six or seven, something like that, and she died. Then I just raised myself. I live off the of land. I didn't even get my hands on, you know. And I can get my hands on a lot of these. Look at these meat hooks. <laughs> these things are huge. Basically, you dang catcher's mitts. So I got a lot of food. Um, but I eat anything, you know. Uh, tree bark, dandelions. I drink water straight out the Henry Fork River. That's how I like to do it. But uh, yeah, I never know. I don't know if I got brothers or sisters. I'm sure if I do, they're a bunch of losers. Total disasters. Man, I don't know how you do it. How do you survive out here on the streets? Well, like I said, you know, I live off the of land. I do. Uh, and the kindness of strangers. People like people like you good people, you know. Uh, it, believe it or not, this town, Hickory, North Carolina, has got the best people on the face of the earth. Absolutely the best. They're fantastic. I love it here. Anybody out here, uh, any give you any problems? Ah, uh, well, there's just one guy. Uh, he makes the worst moonshine you ever tasted in your life. I don't think there's any alcohol in it at all. It's not even real. It's fake booze. Old Clint. Crooked Clint, I call him. Crooked Clint and his crooked distillery. Well, Ron, I'd like to help you out even more if I could. Maybe we can, um, I don't know, maybe we can track down your family members. Take one of those DNA tests. Hell no. No, no I would not. Is that what this is about? That's all y'all, I don't need this, I don't need you, I don't need anybody, I don't need your help, unless you got another chicken biscuit. I'm taking this with you. Wait, Ron, don't no. bother me again. Ron, come on, right, Ron. Leave me alone. No. 
I'm out Quick, of run, here. Run, 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 run. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. Well, that is not how we wanted this interview to end. So we took his drink. We got some DNA and we sent it into Ancestry.com. It's been several weeks now. This time we offered him a hot bath and some new clothes if he would just sit down and talk to us. He again refused. So we gave him $100 and this eight piece from Bojangles Chicken. I got the results right here. Let's go talk to him. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Thanks for, uh, it's good to see you again. Enjoy the chicken. But I felt like we had a good connection and uh, I just really want to help you out. That's all in your head, buddy. There ain't no connection here. I'm just here for the chicken. Okay, go ahead, shoot. Well, um, that day in the car, uh -huh. you happened to leave your drink there. And, well, we, uh, we got some saliva. You mm -hmm. sneaky, sneaky little bastard. And we took a little sample of that, and we sent it in to Ancestry.com to get your DNA results. And I got them right here, Ron. Check it out. It turns out you were almost 100% European, specifically from Karlstadt in the kingdom of B Bavaria, uh, Germany. Okay. Okay. But that's not all. Nope. We dug even further, Ron, into your mitochondrial DNA. Uh huh. And it turns out, Ron, your DNA is an exact match to the Drumpf family, which in the 1600s was changed to Trumpf. Your grandfather is one Frederick Trump, a German-American businessman and the patriarch of the Trump family. In 1891, he moved to the Northwest. He made his fortune by operating restaurants and boarding houses. That's brothels, Ron. Go on. He had two sons, uh -huh. John G. Trump and Fred. Your father is Fred Trump, and that's not all. You also have a half-brother. What? His name is Donald. Donald J. Trump. Ron, what I'm trying to tell you right now is your half-brother is the President of the United States. I know why. Are you kidding me? It's right here. What? How do you feel? Good Lord! What are you going to do now? Well, in the morning, get my brother, call the White House. Have one of your minions call the dang White House. Get him on the horn. We got some stuff to do. <laughs> Can you think of all the chicken I'm going to get now? <laughs> By the way, Bojangles is way better than KFC. And believe me, I know more than the Colonel. All of them combined. This ain't even that dang weird. I mean, I've heard of this before. Every well, a lot of presidents have had some weird, crazy brother like me that they've tried to hide. You remember uh, Jimmy Carter? He had Billy Carter had his own dang bear, Billy Bear. I mean, he was a huge alcoholic, huge, the biggest. Believe me, this I can tell you. Then you had uh, Roger Clinton. Remember him? Total lush, total lush. And then there was uh, hell. I think even uh, Barack Obama had one. Remember him? He had a brother named uh, Malik from Kenya. So, <laughs> this ain't that dang weird. Hey, I might run for something. That's what I'll do. Call up Donald, tell him uh, little brother's gonna run for something right here in Hickory. <laughs> Maybe I could be the mayor of Hickory. <laughs> you hear that, Hank? Knock, knock. Who's there? Hank, Hank who? Hank, guess, guess what? You're gonna be out of a job pretty soon. Believe me, this I can tell you. I'm going to be the best mayor Hickory's ever had. Slow down, Ron. Look, what are, you, what are your issues going to be? Honestly, I ain't much like Donald, to be honest with you. Number one, I don't like golf. Never played it. Don't care for it. It's a horrible sport. It's, it's the worst. I mean, uh, so probably what I'm going to do, every golf course, I'm going to turn it into shelters for victimized, stray, Abuse cats. That's right. We call it Ronald's Cat Houses. Uh, number two, probably get on the NFL there. You know, I'm players taking a knee. Screw that. That ain't that ain't enough. Two knees. You're on two knees now. Kiss the dang ground you're on because you're in America. Best dang country in the world. <laughs> Am I right, John? Well, 
Well, I ain't building no wall. That's for sure. That's just a waste of money. In fact, I'm going to do the opposite of a wall. I'm going to build a gigantic vacuum cleaner, see? And we're going to suck people into the country, whether they want to be here or not. Shit! You're in here. You're American now. We could use your help. See? Get that, uh, what's his name, that guy Dyson. Get him on the horn. <laughs> Those never lose suction. Okay. What else you got, John? All right. What about foreign policy? What about Russia? I don't know much about Russia, so I, mean, I just know that one comedian, Yakov Smirnov. Y'all remember him? He was funny. He used to say, what a country. <laughs> you know what? I heard he's divorced now, so he don't say that no more. He just says, what a cunt. Oh, uh, real quick, John. Yeah. You said I was almost 100% European. Right. What, uh, just curious, what was that other percent? What was it? Um, 1% Mexican. What? Uh, All right, there you go, buddy. Ronald, watch out, Hank Guess, current mayor of Hickory. Ronald Trump is coming for you. Actually, that was just a joke, obviously, but um, the Alan Jackson and I were talking earlier. There's talk I might run for mayor of Hickory just to see if I could win. I, I have no skills in the political arena whatsoever, but I do know a lot of friends, and I know a lot of people, and I could learn. I'm yes. a quick learner, and I think people like me in this town, Sebastian. I think you could make a run for it. You think I could beat Hank Guess? I think you'd take Hank out. I'm going to take Hank out. And it's going to start with the polar plunge, the Alan Jackson. We're going to get that barge and overwhelm him. <laughs> um, speaking of friends in high places with a lot of know-how, I'm blessed to call this person who's behind me right now on the Zoom waiting um, a friend. And she's I've known her my whole life. We went to church together. We went through a lot of stuff together. I knew her as Dodie Bowman, but now she's went on to become Dodie Ranfer, uh, Senior Government Relations Consultant with the North Carolina Government Relations Practice. She has over 25 years experience in political and governmental affairs at the federal, state, and local level. She has led the development, outreach, and fundraising efforts for numerous elected officials, candidates, political organizations, and nonprofits, including the U.S. Senator Elizabeth Dole, Speaker of the House Tom Tillis, David Rouser, and many, many, many. I could sit here and read her bio all day long. We're blessed to have her right now on the horn, Dodie Renfer. How are you? Hi there, John. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm a little perplexed, to be honest with you, um, and I'm hoping you could lend us some expertise here. Why? Hi. Why is David Caldwell kicking Moretz and Williamson's butt so hard? I know, I know. This is a race that we are monitoring very closely here in Raleigh. I mean, it is on our top 10 to watch tonight list. And I, I will just say it's incumbency. Mm. It is incumbency. He is the incumbent. And, um, you know, anytime you are at the top and have been at the top for a period of time, it is very hard to knock down a king. It really is. Right. Because people are comfortable. They're like, look, our soil and water seems to be good now. Why am I going to rock the boat and take a chance on a new guy? So that's, that's right. probably where their heads are at, right? 
That's right. And, you know, you had mentioned this, you guys had talked about the survey and these surveys go out from publications to the candidates. Um, and they ask you guys or the candidates to fill them out and turn back in the answers as to why they want to be in the position. And if you notice, Caldwell did not send in any answers. And sometimes they get a little bit arrogant. Wow. And they feel like, oh, I'm not going to turn that in. Let my work speak for itself. And it appears that's what happened here. Yes. And that's what's bugging me, to be honest with you. It's like these new guys, you know, Moretz is my guy. Young, young blood, 32, eager, military guy. Um, I don't know anything about David Caldwell. I can't find anything on the guy. In fact, when we looked up his picture, you know, we, we saw a guy with neck tattoos. Um, he's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that's the guy. Yeah. They get very comfortable. They get mm -hmm. comfortable and they just rest on their laurels and they just, they just coast, which is why when I'm mayor of Hickory, I'm going to take down David Caldwell, even though I might not have that power. I got to learn a lot about what the responsibilities <laughs> well, and the, the, the powers. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think that you would be an outstanding candidate for Hickory. You know, yeah, hero boy comes home, runs for mayor. Why not? Would you be allowed to vote for me, even though you're in Raleigh? Do you, uh, oh, no, but <laughs> see, I, I don't know in other ways, huh? <laughs> I could help you in other ways, right? You could help me in other ways. I just manager. didn't know, like, Should if you still manager. had an address here <laughs> and what the actual <laughs> laws are. I don't know, no, I don't have an address there. Um. <laughs> Couldn't do that, but hey, we could certainly get some grassroots organization running for you. We, you would have tons of support. Dodie, tons I know I'm putting you on the spot, but do you happen to know when the next election for mayor is? Because I didn't see it on the ballot this time. Two years. No, municipal races are um, off-year races, and so you need to be looking at next year to see if it is coming up next year or it would be um, two years from, from then. Okay. Um, I'm not sure when your mayor was was last elected. Right. But it would either be next year or it would be two years from then. From then. And, and if I wanted to start a campaign, let's say it is next year, um, i got to get the ball rolling right now, right? Yeah, you should have started maybe last year. Okay. Um, but it's not too late. <laughs> uh, we could make the announcement right now and get moving. Yeah. Let's do it. it. Okay, yeah. everybody everybody watching this live right now, me, Dodie, Sebastian, the Allen Jackson, intern Isaiah, we're all saying it right now. You're confirming it. What we're doing. This I'm is gonna run for mayor of Hickory. Yes. And I need your support. I need your support. I don't know when it is. I don't know what my duties are. I don't know what the responsibilities are. <laughs> We're, but it but I good. graduated from North Carolina State University, all right, that's, with that's, a C average yes. in communication and theater. Yep. I can figure it out. Yeah. Right, Dodie? Well, well, yeah, and clearly I think if you were to research a number of candidates and elected officials, you would find that not all of them know what they're doing or have a background <laughs> and what so they you do. Would, <laughs> you would fit right in, John. Right. I might basically be, like they're saying. You would be right in line. She's saying I might be overqualified. You might be overqualified. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> all all right. Right. Well, in all seriousness, uh, there is a big race going on. Right now, so I've been told. Are there are there other races that we should know about that you could give us an update on real quick? I can tell you that numbers are starting to come in. Normally we would have more updates by now, but there were some polling locations this morning in North Carolina, about five to six that had some issues. So those polling locations were allowed to stay open until 815 tonight. Okay. So Results are just now slowly starting to come in in our state. The last I checked, there were about 350 to 400 out of over 2,500 precincts in the state that were reporting. So it's still going to be a little while in North Carolina before we have any kind of real results. Mm -hmm. um, way too close to call right now in the presidential race here mm -hmm. and way too close to call in the other big race, which would be Tillis versus Cunningham for U.S. Senate. Nationally, looking at about five states, you're looking at Florida, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, um, Georgia, Arizona, 
And then you got some others like Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, and it's just right now way too close to call. Yeah. But the last I saw was um, Trump is up about two percentage points in Florida. Um, and with about 88% of the precinct showing. So all I can tell you is it's going to be a late, late night for people like me who have to monitor it for work. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'll be up well, all night. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this at all, Dodie, um, and, and, and everything that you do. Um, I just love you so much. So thank you so much. Um, love you guys so much. Anytime. Do you, do we want to, before we let her go, do we want another update from Isaiah? Or should we took a break and come back? All right, Dodie, I want you to stay tuned. I, do you, I know you probably have interns. Isaiah, get in here. I don't know what's taking you so long. I already said your name. Why are you not running in here with an update? Why are you, why are you only walking? Get, come, uh, well, try my best. <laughs> <laughs> My best. What did he say? He said, he's, he said, all right, nothing. look, Dodie, here's the latest. Okay. I'm sass. The, I like that. The numbers have changed. They have changed? They've Maybe changed. More influence than the la last we left. Okay. So now, okay. Williamson is up 1%. He, w he went from, uh, oh, sh no, wait, which one did you hand me? <laughs> he handed me this one. Yeah. Williamson's down. Moretz. Is exactly the same. <laughs> Caldwell way ahead, fifty-one point seventy-eight percent. This sucks. All right, thank you, oh Dodie. My gosh. I appreciate You're so it. You're welcome. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Sounds good, guys. All right, everybody, don't go anywhere. We're gonna take a quick break, and don't forget, we got small town news. We got a Heffern and Reap. We have a very funny interview with Sean Conroy. We'll be right back with more country-ish after this. Hey, everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh, wait. Are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us in many different ways. There's... Uh, different levels you got five dollars and up you got pewter pro rhinestone level executive zirconia all the way up to platinum elite and all of them come with different rewards we're talking hats t-shirts ginger beard masks even be a guest on the show you gotta check out our patreon page go to countryishpodcast.com click on support and thank you Hey everybody, John Reap here, hanging out at Wanio's Silver Bullet. We're gonna go check it out. Only place on 127 you can brown bag. Come on! Real quick, if you want to help us out, one way you can do it is give us a rating and a review at Apple Podcast. As you can see right behind me, so far we've gotten 234 ratings, all five stars, baby. That's what we want. Also, you can write a review. The last one was written on April the 10th, 2020, so we need some new ones. Go in there and be creative. Say nice things, please, and it will help us here at the studio. Keep the lights on and keep making funny country-ish podcasts. Thank you. And we're back. All right, uh, Sebastian, um, I got to come clean with you about something. And I wish, I hope that you're not too angry when I give you this news, but... I do another podcast without you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. First, we have the candidate issue tonight. Mm -hmm. Now you're springing this on me. Yeah. I do another podcast without you. It's with a comedian friend of mine named John Heffron. And, um, Never heard of this guy. Well, you know, he's pretty popular in Michigan. 
one of the battleground states. Um, huh. He won last comic standing before. Oh. Me. Man, man, look, I, 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 I'm not here to make you feel bad. I just want you to know. It's out there in case other people find it and tell you, Dude. I want to be the one to let you know I do another podcast. I'm I, saying it. I, I won most witty in high school. Look, you are a very witty person, uh, especially from Newton, and you're tall, and you did... You yeah, how tall great. is Heffron? 5'1", right. probably. I, you know, That's he's fine. not 5'1". Look... We did this podcast. We we got on. Uh, we like to talk about things from the eighties. Oh, and old we, guys. we got on to the subject of members only jackets mm. and old eighties commercials about Jordash jeans. Did you ever own a pair of Jordash jeans? Us poor guys, not like you, were from the rich neighborhood. We couldn't afford members only. Thank you for bringing it up, though. Go ahead. You probably had the knockoff brand. I did. Man's from, Club. Uh, I or, think it was uh, <laughs> cotton cotton gin or something. <laughs> All right. All right, look, let's enjoy this little clip here, a little sample of the Heffern and Reap podcast. Did you ever wear Jordache jeans? No, I didn't wear Jordache jeans. That was uh, mostly females where I was from. That's, that's what they wore. But the, I do remember Jordache jeans. Did they make yeah. them for guys? Well, so here's what I so I was watching, and I remember there was one girl in our high school that had Jordache jeans, and she was probably like the first girl to get like a butt, where you yeah. could, when she was walking with those Jordache jeans, you were. But I remember I saved all all summer or whatever, and then went to the mall where I grew up by Twelve Oaks, and I bought a Ocean uh, Pacific hoodie. Oh yeah, OCP. Right, I got Ocean Pacific. Um, and then I got a pair of Jordache, and I don't remember what jeans were popular back then. Like it was Levi, it was Bugle uh, Boy. Yeah, Jerbos and all that stuff came later. I'm, I'm talking when I was in maybe sixth grade. Sixth okay. Grade. Like there was ooh la la. So there were like Lee jeans. There was yeah, Tattoon, yeah. I believe, or a female jean, but I had a pair of Jordache. Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein's an old friend of mine. Don't want nobody's name on my behind. Get so low. yeah. I had a pair of Jordache jeans. You might be the only guy I know to buy and wear Jordache jeans. Um now is this when acid wash came out? Nope, before. Is before acid wash? Was it before yeah. the two tone? No, it was so the jeans were super genie color and then they had super gold stitching that just went up like mm. on the crotch and it had I don't know, the, those of you on Facebook, it was were Jordash jeans. Right. Um, yeah, were they girl jeans? You know? Well, uh, according to the comments, can I can I jump in just for a second, guys? Yeah, because I've got breaking news here. Um, oh, I do have in video form a response to the Jordash jeans men's debate if you are okay with me playing it oh yes alan let's do that first and then let's show and the commercial member. for uh, members only okay Jordash. <laughs> oh, Woo, John, you had the Jordash look. Did you do this? I had the Jordash look. Did you I dance with your shoulders the, like that? The Jordash look. I forgot about the um the two tone jeans. No, yeah, two tone. That I asked you about that. Oh, I, I said acid wash. I um, said acid wash, and then I said two tone after that. Yeah, love me some John Heffern, love me some Jordash, Calvin Klein. Don't forget to check out Heffern and Reap podcast, heffernandreap.com. Now, 
I think it's time we get a new update from intern Isaiah. Intern Isaiah, can you give me a new update on what is going on in the race for the Soil and Water Conservation Board of Supervisors? Please come in here. I don't know why. I okay, Yes, let's go. Isaiah, can you please walk slower? <laughs> what is taking you so long with these updates? My gosh. Give it to me. What is he? I, what is wrong with it? What happened to your vest? Look at him. He's losing it. Look, this is what happens this is on election night. night. People like this is serious race we're talking about. People get stressed out. Temperatures up. Everyone's getting <sighs> upset. All right, this just in. Mm. Got an update. Um, David Caldwell, fifty-one point seventy-eight percent. Williamson, eighteen point seventy-one. Moretz is at twenty twenty-eight point forty-one. A lot of time left, so I'm not. We, we, I'm we a little do, worried. At this 51 is a big number to beat. This, like like Dirty said, the incumbents. Nobody talked about the missing seeds from Burke County from David Caldwell. Nobody brought that up in this whole election. No one talked about the servers. No. Nope. No one talked about the missing emails. I, I mean, mean, bringing soil in from a different county. I've heard about this. Yep. Nobody said anything about that. We should have. We should have done more. You know, I feel, the, I feel bad now. Maybe we should have came together. For a guy who's point. supposed to, cons- we should have come together. For a guy who's supposed to conserve water and soil, Caldwell's been known for shipping our soil out yeah. to other states. Yeah, and our water. selling our soil. Well, I also want to say this: um, there is another race going on. Oh, pre precedent. Pre- pre- Precedent. Pre- precedent. Precedent of, I don't um, Howie Hawkins oh. is running for precedent. Yeah. How's he doing? Of America. And he's at 0.23% in Catawba County. 0.23%. 0. 0.023%. 0.023%. It's 0.23%. 0.23%. Yeah. So it'd be 0.23%. Yeah, zero point two three in Catawba County. Yeah, Howie Hawkins. Best of luck to Best Howie Hawkins. Howie. Double pre- H precedent. Um, intern Isaiah, if you're not too mad at me, if you're not too worked up, can, do we have any interesting comments in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube? We're going I don't live. Know if I should read them because I'm pissed at you. Just read one okay, of them. Okay, I'll read one of them just to shut you up. Please, Samantha. Said, hold on, let me find it. Don't get mad. Samantha Don Kingston, super yeah. supporter Samantha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said, feels like the whole country is on Mari waiting to find out who's the father. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy uh. now? I read a comment. I love I love you, Isaiah. I love how you read I love the way you pronounce Mari. Mar- um Mari. I don't know how you yeah. do that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but she's right. Good comment, Samantha Don Kingston. Is there another one that you, you might as well do another one if you got another good one ready to roll? Uh, if not, we can move on. I don't want to stretch. Wish you Elliot up. was here. I wish I know. I wish Elliot was. Elliot runs. Yeah, he runs fast. Elliot picks up the pace. John, you just need to shut up, okay? Well, how about you just do your job and read a comment? What am I not paying you for? <laughs> okay, are you ready, <laughs> asshole? Let's go. I know. It's so hard for him to be mean. I love it. I love you, Isaiah. Just read one more comment. We'll move on, buddy. Bur- Brooke. Brooke. Said, Brooke? Yeah. Said Moretz. I live in Hado, but go vote for Moretz. Brooke. Wait, no, he yeah, said Brooke. I live in Hado. Idaho. <laughs> Idaho, Idaho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hidey ho. Well, look, he's rooting for Moretz. That's my guy. Yeah. So thank you uh, from Hido. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on. Unless there's th- oh no, here's one thing we can all agree on, right? Okay. If, if I want to get real for a second. Okay, let's break it. All right. Let me put my. This is a big real. election going on. For the president of the United States, yeah. right? For, for real, that's what's going yeah. on. And I think we can all agree that no matter what happens, it's a win-win. I love them both. Can I vote for both? Nope, too late. <laughs> Voted for Howie Hawkins. 
<laughs> anyway, look, you're, you're, you're like, the vote. <laughs> you're the vote to put him over. Uh, Howie Hawkins, hey, man. How can you not vote for a name like Howie Hawkins? That's a great name. I want to know more about Howie Hawkins. He should have campaign signs like Hungry for Howie. <laughs> this Call. is how we do it. <laughs> Call us, Howie, for marketing next year. Yeah, four years. From I'm now. running for mayor. He's yeah. running. For, we could we could work something out. Collusion. Yeah. <laughs> Is that good or bad? I don't know. That it sounds like, well. There was some collusion going on in the in the soil and conservation. Is that right? Race. Yeah, collusion. There. Yeah, there was a lot of collusion. collusion. Yeah, That's and I'm, erosion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which David Caldwell did not address. No, he didn't address the erosion issue we've got here in Catawba yeah, how, County. How come David Caldwell doesn't address the erosion issue in Hickory? Why don't he put his face on his page? Why? <laughs> right. What does David Caldwell have a neck tattoo of Ivy? <laughs> or could be kudzu. Could be kudzu. We want to know. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we want to know. know, David. Yeah. We need you to call in. Straighten this out. I mean, look at the difference in these three individuals. This is great. I think my guys, I like a well manicured beard. Uh, I got to be honest with you. I like a well manicured beard. All right, let's move on. We have a very funny interview with a comedian. I want to get to. Zoomed in a while back. Um, you, you, this guy, like big in improv. He's a part of the Upright Citizens Brigade. Um, he started his own podcast called uh, uh, Sean Conroy Gets Happier <laughs> in this time. It's time to get happier. I say we get happier and enjoy this interview with the very funny Sean Conroy. And joining us right now, the very hilarious, the very funny Sean Conroy. How are you? I am doing well. I am doing very well. Well, oh. tell me your start, my friend. Uh, you, you're big into uh, UCB, I see, right? I am, yeah. I, uh, so I started doing, well, I started doing improv, not stand-up. I was, uh, uh, you know, and, and this goes back a long, a long time. Uh, so I got out of college, and I was like, I'll move to New York and be an actor. I'm going to be an actor. I'm an actor. That's what I do. I'm an actor. I didn't know what, you know, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. And uh Tried out for this. I saw an ad in a in a in a backstage, which was like a theater paper that said, "Do you think you can be funny on the spot?" And I was like, "I think I could do that." Mm -hmm. And uh, tried out for this improv company and loved it. And ended up in a group called Chicago City Limits, which was an off Broadway show in New York. So I toured the country for a while. I actually, did some shows down in North Carolina back in the mid nineties. Nice. Uh, I think there was a place called Thalian Hall yep. or something like that. That's uh, in Wilmington. Beautiful, beautiful yes. theater down there. Yes. Um, but then UCB came to New York in 96, and I saw them, and it kind of blew my mind, and that was what I wanted to do after that. Uh, so I started working with them, and then also I got to the point where I was like, well, I'm improvising with all these people on stage, but I'm not getting to where I want to get to as, as a solo performer, and that's when I started doing doing stand-up so that's you know a while now yeah what do you like i know everyone probably asks this question what do you like best do you like sharing this sharing the stage with other people when you're improving, or do you like the focus of just you and the crowd or i it, it, it's such a hard question to answer because I, I love both of them but uh the thing that I love about improvising is that you're building something with other people the whole time, as opposed to when you're doing stand up. I sometimes, not all the time, but I definitely sometimes I'm like, you know, that old, that old Bill Hicks thing of like, Oh, I guess I got to plow through this shit one more time mm -hmm. you know, where yeah. it's like, you have the things you're going to do. And unless you're constantly trying to switch it up and add new stuff, which I, Get, definitely get lazy about sometimes. Sure. Uh, it's just a set thing as opposed to improv where you just never know where it's going to go. You know? Yeah, that's the thing about improv too is like w when it's good, it's the best thing you'll ever see. When someone's really in the moment, even if it's just one guy improving with the crowd, you know, not yeah. necessarily a scene, um, it's like this is magic. How right. this guy is a genius. And then if it goes the other way, then it could be the exact opposite of that. 
to where it's, it's so awkward. it's so uncomfortable. It's so <laughs> it's uncomfortable to watch bad improv. Tiptoe out yeah. of the room and not be seen, and you feel bad for the person. Um, and unfortunately, it's the kind of thing where everybody who sees it goes, "Oh, I could do that," mm-hmm. you know. And so there's a lot of bad improv that you can see. Yeah, uh, which I think is unfortunate for all of us i wish i had dabbled in it earlier i was strictly stand-up guy i was a theater Uh major in college Uh um, but not because i love theater it was because honestly i thought it would be the easiest degree to get Uh and i just wanted a college degree i had no plan was it easy to get i well i thought it would be um Uh and i don't know how hard other things are but it was not as hard as (laughs) chemistry you know, right. <laughs> so I mean, I'm good did you at talking. To, did you have to do like real theater stuff? Yeah, so we had to do. Uh, I was only in one play. You know, it was uh-huh. a theater major. I had to start from the bottom. It, and this theater company already had their clique of actors that they all right. they right, were already right. buddies, right? So yeah. here I am, the new guy trying to fit into their club. So what am I going to do? Oh, I'm the prop guy. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, go, go be stage manager, you know? Right, uh, right. So I had to do the grunt work. And by the time I was ready to be in the play, I was graduating. I was in one play. Uh, uh, I played the London Bobby. I had one line. It was, really, <laughs> it was nothing. So, but I just chose it because I thought it would be easy and fun. And I, you know, I'm kind of, I was a class clown in high school. I'm a comedian. Right. I think I could figure it out. And right. when I took this acting class, I realized that I, I must be pretty good because other people are coming up to me going like, well, that was great, man. I'd love to do a scene with you. Can, can, we, can I be your scene partner next time? I'm like, uh-huh. yeah, okay, that's weird, whatever. It's, I think I gravitated it toward, towards it. Um, it was a little easier for me than maybe other people who are afraid to talk and you know, public right. sp- speaking is hard for a lot of people. But I, it, for me, it wasn't that bad. So, people were people were coming up to you and going, "Wait, you're not actually a London Bobby? <laughs> How is that possible?" That's right. So my Cockney give it away. <laughs> yes, and I, yeah, they gave me a tape to take home and listen to all these these this oh, London really? Cockney. So for about a week, I was stuff. walking around yeah. talking like this. You know, <laughs> it's like a, a spot of tea, please. It's a great skill to have when you actually go into uh, audition for things and, and work with other people as an actor. Right. And I, I feel like when I started, certainly when I started UCB, it was very much the Island of Misfit Toys. Like it was the play, you know, it was like the, <laughs> it was like Richard Gere in basic training in Officer and a Gentleman where he was like, I, I got nowhere else to go. That was all the people that were doing that was all the people that were doing improv. You I just know? saw that movie again like a week ago. So it's Such fresh a in great my brain. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, what a cry but, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. But but over the years, over the last 20 years, it's become much more of a, oh, this is a thing you have to do to be successful as a comedic actor you know so now it's kind of become well i mean not now because now it's become a closed thing like every other Mm -hmm. thing these days but it got to a point where it was just churning out people who were on a track to be successful sitcom actors whereas i feel like when i was starting out there it was just like this is what you did because you wanted to be a weird funny person (laughs) you know yeah, so um, so what do you... Uh, I know your podcast, um, Sean Conroy, Gets Happier. Yes. What do we do on this? How are we getting happier? Well, <clears throat> I don't know that we are, but we're certainly trying, you know. Uh, I had done a podcast for years called The Long Shot, which uh, I did with several other comics. And we were, uh, we were in- incredibly successful... To, to like seven people, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. and we would get emails and, and, you know, messages all the time. And a lot of them basically had a theme to them, which was like, listening to your show got me through some difficult times. I was having a hard time and I really appreciate you guys, you know, giving me something to distract me from, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it, it helped me out. And, so when that show ended, I was kind of thinking about that idea and how, you know, I think 
not unhappiness, but not being happy is sort of a normal part of the human condition. And certainly unhappiness has been, uh, you know, present in my life quite a bit over the years. So I thought it'd be interesting to just look at that idea. And it seems like that's a thing that has really become interesting to people over the last, I don't know how long, five years, 10 years, yeah. or whatever. It's all this stuff about here's 10 hacks to make you happier. <laughs> right. And I feel like if we know all that, how come everybody's not fucking happy all the time? Right. You know? Yeah. So on my show, I started talking. To, and I also think it's a funny contrast between being a comic and being unhappy. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like a lot of comedians are not particularly happy people. And yet their whole job is to go on stage and make other people happy. Definitely. And I don't yeah. quite understand what that connection is. I, so, I, I blame it on, um, Whoever wrote Tears of a Clown, uh, <laughs> it started there. Everyone started thinking like, oh, man, clowns, are they cry sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're normal human beings. Uh, we're out there. We, we're giving it our all on stage, trying to make people laugh. And then, you, and then really at the end of the night, you go home and you're by yourself in a hotel room. And That's that can, it. That can be it. really Which sad. Which is like, is there anything lonelier than a comedian in a hotel room after... Because there you are in a room full of people. You're the one person who's supposed to be talking the whole time. Right. So it's not like, I mean, the art form is we're having a conversation right now, but it's not a conversation. It's you doing a monologue the mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. And then everybody walks home and goes, that guy was great. Do you want to go get some ice cream or whatever? And mm -hmm. you're like, hey, can somebody give me a ride back to the hotel room? <laughs> I, think I, got a, right. I think I got a non-smoking room. So, what? Uh, who were some of your comedy influences? Uh, you mean like growing up? Yeah, as a kid, you're like for me yeah. when I was a kid, I would watch uh, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis movies. Uh huh. It, uh, just as a kid, and I'm like, oh, I love Jerry Lewis. And then it, as I got older, it changed. But right, yeah, yeah. For me, uh, I mean, from the time I was very little, I loved Peter Sellers. Uh -huh. Like the Pink Panther was oh, yeah. just my absolute favorite thing, and I still will flip it on every once in a while because I just find it so, I mean, it's so dumb, but is it he is the one so that says, funny to me. Does your dog bite? Yes. Yeah. Yes. See, and like when I was, when I was seven years old, that was the best joke I had ever heard. <laughs> it's you know? great. That's not my dog. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great uh, joke. And there are so many like that. And, and, and that's very much in the vein also of like airplane, which I loved as a kid and, and top secret. What about your yeah. dad? My dad was a big comedy influence on my life. He was, uh, I basically was trying to make my dad laugh my whole, my whole life. Um, uh -huh. I looked up to him and he was a class clown. He was the funny one when I was a kid and, uh, still is. But, uh, what about you? Yeah, I would say my dad was a big influence on my, on my sense of humor. Both my parents, uh, my dad, you know, uh, it's tricky because, by the time he had us, he was a high school principal, basically. You know, he was a, he was a teacher and then a high school principal. Wow. And so he was kind of uh, in a position where he was an authority figure and had to be serious and all that stuff. Uh, but he was always, I mean, I know when he was younger, he used to do all kinds of like prank phone calls and all that kind of shit, like one of those people okay. to the point where he would get other people in trouble. But... <laughs> um, one thing I feel like was always true with him was, you know, he, he was always very deadpan and like committed so hard to bits. Like I remember once we went to dinner, we, we, we lived in a house when I was little that my parents hired a contractor to paint and that contractor, this was his first job in America. Okay. So he was always grateful to my parents. And that guy ended up buying that house eventually and living in his the house he first painted when oh, he wow. went to America. So he invited my whole family to come for dinner with his family. And so it was this very nice, like, this Italian family that had emigrated to America. And this was the first house they painted that we had lived in when, when I was little. And, you know, so we're at this dinner and my mother is like having a problem with her contact lens. She's just like <laughs> rubbing at her lens. And the guy goes, 
are you, you know, is your contact lens bothering you? And my father at this beautiful dinner, like very, just goes, oh no, Tony, my wife has a glass eye. <laughs> and like, completely straight face, no, you know, and my mother doesn't want to be, make it seem like he's being rude. She doesn't know what to say. I'm like dying laughing. All my brothers are dying laughing. <laughs> Finally, my mom goes, no, he's, he's kidding. You know, but like he's, <laughs> yeah. he just feels like it's funny to, say things with a straight face that yes. people are going to believe. Uh, he, he also he also is always willing to go so far with a bit. Like, we, we had a... My, my grandparents had a house up in the Catskill Mountains when I was a kid, and we used to go up there, you know, on weekends or whatever and uh, have, like, another family come and visit. And we would play a game that we called Guatlavian Murderer, which is... Basically, you turn off all... It's like hide-and-seek in reverse. Like, mm -hmm. you turn off all the lights in the house and somebody goes and hides, yeah. and then everybody has to go and find that person. Mm -hmm. and when you find the other person, you hide with them. So eventually, oh, okay. there's only, like, two or three people left walking around in this pitch-black house trying to find everybody else. Right. Uh, and my dad one time hid, and nobody could find him, and my mother was furious and saying... I bet he got in the car and drove down to the village. He's probably not even here anymore. And so we turned all the lights on in the house and like another hour went by and nobody knew where he was. We were still trying to figure out where he was. And finally we were sitting in the bedroom upstairs and he pushed up from underneath the mattress on, like he was between the mattress and the box spring <laughs> for literally an hour and a oh half. My he God. stayed in there. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Just he so he could hear my mom complaining about how he was cheating the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he fell asleep. I mean, like, he well, could have. <laughs> you know? Here's one you're gonna love. If you could have one superpower, he like hero superpower. Yes. What would it be and why? Uh, I would like to have the power to go to the front of any line without causing anybody to be upset. <laughs> I think you could pay extra for that at Disney World. <laughs> That's true. It's yeah. not even a superpower. It's just the power of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're yeah. talking about no, grocery I, stores, uh, just yeah, the everyday and, 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 stuff. I, I feel like there's always there's always scuffles with people. You know, yeah. like I was here first, you were not here. I was here, uh, so it'd be nice. Like anytime, because there's nothing worse than when you're going somewhere and you're like, oh shit, I gotta wait behind all these people. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you uh, zooming in. Um, anything you want to plug or promote that's uh, coming up? I, I would just say uh, uh, check out my website because I have a lot of stuff I do. I send out a, a thing every week called The Life Letter, which is just about shit that goes on in Hollywood. I just uh, went to – do you remember a place in Hollywood called Playboy Liquors up on – Yeah. Uh, 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 I know exactly where that was. That was a Wilcox, wasn't it? It, Wilcox and Yucca, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, I, that's where I lived. I could walk to it. Right, me too. So holy uh, crap! So you, I was there the night after the debates, and I, I wrote a big thing about that. It was. Uh, it's always there's always shit going on at Playboy late at night. <laughs> yeah, Pl P L A no Y. Playboy, right? No, Pla it's Playboy. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yes, I remember Playboy liquor. Okay, I got to yeah. read that. And your website is Sean Conroy. SeanConroy dot com. We'll talk to you later, right. buddy. Take Thank it easy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. We're back. Thanks for hanging in there. Thank you, Sean Conroy. Um, I think it's time to move on to, uh, dare I say, the anchor of the show. Something that people look forward to a lot when it comes to country-ish podcast. Um, you know, there is a lot going on in the news <laughs> right now <laughs> as we speak on election night. Um, and, I, th you know, I'll, we like to find them stories that don't always make the big headlines. Thank you, D. Allen Jackson. I was running out of stuff to say. Here we go. We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed. You never do mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All right, Sebastian, what do you have for us tonight? Well, 
We've been talking about politics tonight. Yeah. The first political show ever. Right, right, right. Keeping in you know, with the atmosphere of that. I like it. We'll roll right with this. Happened in Haines City, Florida. Oh, wait. Haines City. Is that where they make the underwear? They probably do not make the underwear there. Okay. We can say if you want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think of, it's. I think it's spelled differently. It's spelled differently. Yeah. Haines this is City. Haines City with the I. Gotcha. They, the, they put the I in Haines. Mm, I hate when people do that. <laughs> Florida man stole a bulldozer. <laughs> Already. I'm okay. In. That happens all the time in right. Florida. Yeah. So far, nothing weird nothing here. Nothing weird here. But he decided to run down some Biden signs. Wait. What kind of signs? Oh, I don't know. What is that word you said? Bidden. Be, by, B- uh, Biden? Biden. Is this B- a person? Yeah, I don't know who he is, huh. but it's B-I-D-E-N. Got it. Political thing. Something about a race. <laughs> okay. Has nothing to do with, Not soil with soil or water. water. Not the soil and water conservation race that race. we're covering. Gotcha. But there's another race going on. All right. No, but I like this. A guy... In Florida, steals a bulldozer and runs over some Biden signs. Yeah. That sounds classic. 26-year-old James Blythe told officers that he was too drunk at the time to remember what happened. <laughs> and we got a video, Alan. All right. Let's check out the video. A man in central Florida is accused of stealing a bulldozer and then driving over yard signs supporting Joe Biden. News Nation reporter Stacy De Silva. That's the story. Are you kidding me? <laughs> there's, there's, I'm, I'm, I don't even believe it. That was Adam Burgess's reaction when he found out what happened. He lives in Atlanta but owns this home. The former Haines City vice mayor is a Joe Biden supporter. This weekend, police say 26-year-old James Blight stole a front-end loader from this construction site, went to Burgess's home, took his Biden signs, and crashed into his fence. And he decides to drive to the this way neighborhood that just happens to be almost entirely African American and start destroying property, and that's ridiculous. As for Blight, he told police he had been drinking all day and couldn't remember what happened. Police said he showed no signs of impairment. Witnesses were shocked. In today's climate, I guess it's normal for us to see people doing weird things. But I think that was kind of crazy. But to go to the extent to want to destroy property, I mean, it's just nonsense. It's not going to sway a vote one way or the other. Stacy De Silva, News Nation. Hey, well, what do you, you say? After that? I mean, who has Where do we begin? Okay, okay. we're going to leave those guys' comments. But yeah, I like it when they said he was. He his argument was he was so drunk they doesn't remember, and then they said the cops go like. Didn't seem impaired to us at all. Yeah. So he was trying to use the excuse of alcohol, and they go like, "No, no, no you're just you're just an a hole." Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. What? Tell me more. What are your thoughts? You know, I mean, you'd think he'd be drunk. Right. It sounds like something a drunk person would do. Yeah. Um, I would. I, I wouldn't even know how to steal a bulldozer. Unless the keys are in it. You know what I mean? Remember when we had the one about yeah. the kid who stole yeah. the school bus? Yeah. How did they and get... we were amazed that he could even drive the school bus. I can't even find my keys to leave tonight. <laughs> and there's keys in all these things. Right. You know? So I, I guess he maybe he works for a bull. I mean, he must know how to do that. You think? Yeah. And then uh, runs over the sides. Yeah. And I don't know if they said it there, but he says runs over the signs repeatedly. Okay. Like, let's. <laughs> How many times does it take with a bulldozer to knock over a, a cardboard? It's like sign. put it in reverse, <laughs> yeah. back over it. Maybe he's doing l- l- laps and donuts no. and stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know. If I were that dude, right? Let's just say, what's his dude's name? James Blight. First of all, perfect name for this. Yeah. Blight. Isn't that like what you call. Like a disease that takes out stuff, <laughs> ruins things. You're saying he was born to do this. Yeah, he was doing his namesake. Yeah. His last name was Blight. He's yeah. got to take stuff out. Um, yeah. So, but why? I'm I'm playing. If I were James Blight, okay. I'm not though. My name is John Reed. Yeah. I'm not James Blight. Yeah. If I were James Blight. 
and now we're going to get drunk and steal a bulldozer. Why just stop at taking down some signs, dude? Have some fun. I know. I mean, can well, you not dig holes with those things? I've always wanted to. Can you know, just start digging up land? Yeah. Yeah. This is James why Blatt so, <laughs> Alan, <laughs> can, can you pull up James Blatt's uh, Facebook thing? Let's, let's dig into this. this. <laughs> oh, oh, he's on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> Okay, well, look. let's see. Let's see what he enjoys. What is James? Okay, outdoors. Yep. Like to have. Okay, this is what it says about James Blake. Yeah. Outdoors like to have bonfires, go camping, shooting archery, listening to music, enjoying life. And he enjoyed his life with that bulldozer <laughs> and taking out Biden sons. <laughs> yeah, taking out Biden down. sons. Let's, okay, so he's not a photography expert. <laughs> Why do you say that? I know well, you're an angle guy. I mean, you're bad you're, angles, even with the weird Amish beard. Yeah, bad angles. It's underneath. He's trying to show off that uh, that Lord of Rings ring he's got on his finger there. <laughs> Something from is like that a poison ring. Like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it could have poison in it. You yeah, could open it up. Yeah. Too much headroom. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Too much headroom, and then his background. What are we? What is this? Um, doesn't spend a lot of time on Facebook. Probably a hardworking guy. Yeah. <laughs> We're profiling this guy now. We're, uh, He's got a healthy beard, though. Yeah. Let's scroll. Okay. Into animal training. Yep. Markmanship, hiking, archery, martial arts, video games, and listening to music. Okay. Well, um, probably not going to vote for Biden, I guess. No. You, <laughs> See, you, I thought he was just so enthusiastic. You thought he was going to replant them somewhere else. And right, he was going to steal the Biden signs yep. for himself. Oh. Put them in his yard. He could Not make, because he doesn't like Biden, but because he loves Biden. That's an interesting <laughs> angle. <laughs> that is. It's interesting. Um, oh, oh, yeah, look at this. Yeah. What does that say back here? Let's read the sign <laughs> in the background. The measure of love is to love without, without measure. measure. <laughs> oh. Oh. Kitchen rules. Well, that's great. He'd... Dude, check out the speakers in the background. Wow. Yeah. Old school. He says he likes listening to music. Old style. He's and probably... that's proof of the yeah. speakers in the background. Um, I wonder if he went to jail. I wonder what's going on with this dude. Well, Do we have there... an update on James <clears throat> Blight? Yep. Yeah, um... Also, let's say this. Okay. If Trump wins, no, if Trump loses, James Blight might go on a crazy tear with another bulldozer. Yeah, he, I think. Unless they, he's locked up. I think he's probably not going to get out before after the election. <laughs> but Blight was also accused of bulldozing down a city speed limit sign, among other signs. Okay, all right, now I'm with him. Okay. Right, it's uh, if you're going to steal a bulldozer, you can't just bulldoze one sign. He you, took out a street sign. Yeah, I like this. Maybe he didn't like the speed limit. He's going faster than the speed limit on that bulldozer. Oh, Alan is highlighting something. Ooh, this is his last job. This is where he got the experience. He's a forklift truck operator at Advanced Auto Parts Distribution Center. So this guy knows his way around some heavy equipment. Yeah, you know. Things that lift things and bulldoze things. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I do have one funny story I could add to this. Okay. A long time ago. Well, this is when I was in my CVCC years. Yep. This would have been uh, from 90 to 92. Um, I forgot w who was running for what. But you know when there's an election year, there are signs like this everywhere. Yeah. Right? And we have a friend named Mike Hauser. What's up, <laughs> booger? Hope you're watching. Uh, who's a big political guy, right? Like, he's into all that stuff. He knows everything that's going on. I'm not, you know. I don't know what's going on half the time. I just want people to be happy. Um, and like I said, no matter who wins, it's a win-win. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> but um, one year, me and some other friends just thought it would be funny if we put a bunch of random political signs in his yard. Uh, and we didn't even know which side of these uh, the aisle he was on. We just knew he liked it. So uh, we stole, I want to say, 
probably 75 to 100 signs. And just instead of like rolling someone's yard or teeping it, we just planted signs. <laughs> and we, and they're all kinds of different sizes. And I remember being in the back of a truck with all these signs, and I had to lay down Keep and them. hold on to a, like a two before, because one sign we stole was <laughs> almost like a billboard. <laughs> And we had to weigh it down so it wouldn't fly out the back. <laughs> and we put them all. So you were over. you were you were uh, <laughs> you were riding in the back, uh, holding it down. Holding uh, it I forgot down. what your weight. It, it would have been 91, 92, dog. 90. Well, who was running for what in the 91, 90, 92? Reagan, mm, Reagan so it would have been Bush, right? Probably was uh, Jesse Helms. <laughs> we probably had tons of Jesse Helms, Jesse Helms, and all those. And we put them I all. I probably got over. Booger crazy. He got so it? mad, and we did. I don't think we ever told him, Mike. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I did it. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm confessing. I got to air all this stuff if I'm going to yeah. run for mayor of Hickory. You got to let it all out now before they start going in the right, closet. Because Hank Guess is going to start digging around. Oh, he's going to dig. Guess what? I did that. <laughs> what you got now? Yep. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yep. All right, look, James Blight, what's wrong with you, son? I like that his argument was that he was too drunk to remember, and then the cops go like, no, you, you weren't drunk. But did they do an alcohol? Did they do a blood test? There's no, there's no evidence that they did that alcohol test. But I'm going to say knowing where he's from. Uh-huh. And I've been there a few times. Right. Through there, Central Florida. Right. Polk County. Oh, Polk County? Yeah. What do we know about Polk County? Polk County. I mean, we've done a bunch of stories out of Polk County. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Famous famous sheriff from Polk County, Grady Judd. Oh, is that the guy that makes... Um... Makes his prisoners wear pink underwear. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It is funny. <laughs> um, so they, they, they like to have a good time. They like to have a good... Bonfires in Central Florida. Um, He's still bulldozers. It looks here as... Uh, oh, no, Wait. He's charged with grand theft auto, yeah, trespassing, which is what I guess grand theft auto is a big one. Well, they made a game out of it. They did. So maybe, I wonder if that had anything to do with it too. Like, I want to know big, is it a DUI? If he is. Oh, drunk. thank you. Good point. Is it a DUI? What are we a, charging him with? Driving a bulldozer drunk? DUI. You can get a long but no, but charge. then they said he wasn't drunk. Right. So he probably, <laughs> this might be the first time ever someone's tried to get a DUI. Yeah, and couldn't. And they said, no, 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 no you're not drunk. No, no. You're just an a-hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I feel drunk. I want to be drunk. I bet he was drunk. Um, yeah, and then it says here, former vice mayor Adam Burgess, who lived there, uh, it, it was his yard. Yeah. Was it his property? It was his yeah, yard? His so I yard. wonder if he was going after him. You know what I mean? Like targeting like a hate that crime. dude. Well, Could that's be. what it says, too. Hate, hate crime. crime. He called it a hate crime. I don't crime. think he thought it through that. I think he just randomly decided, I don't like these Biden guys. I don't think it's a... I wouldn't say a hate crime either. I mean, nah. No one was physically harmed. He just, just got decides. drunk and did something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that qualifies, but... Blight, get your shit together, son. What's wrong with you? And, and follow a real race. I mean, we're up here trying to yeah. get the Soil and Water Conservation right. Supervisor voted in, and you're out there, a race that doesn't Why even don't matter. You take out David Caldwell's yard. Yeah, we'll give you David's Take some Sanders. of his soil and water with that bulldozer of <laughs> yours. <laughs> anyway, Haines City, Florida. Right. The town might be small, but, but the, the news. This is huge. All right, Sebastian. Um, I think we did a good job in here today. Although, um, I no. still want one more update. One last from update. Intern Isaiah. Intern Isaiah, are you awake? Can you come in here and give us an update on who is winning the Soil and Water Conservation Board? Let's go. What do you. Quickly. People are waiting. This is live. My good Lord, what has happened? I've had about enough of you. That is assault. I've had about enough of you. Put your clothes there back you on, young yeah. man. <laughs> You're a young boy. You have a small mouth, no lips, oh. so just shut up. Yeah, you don't have to get personal <laughs> these attacks. Thank you for the report, intern Isaiah. Um, well, it's gotten worse. 
Caldwell's up. It's he's up now fifty two percent. Williamson's at eighteen. Moretz is at twenty eight. So if we're if we made a game out of this, you're beating me. I'm beating you at least. But we're both losing to the incumbent. David Caldwell. Well, mm. folks, I don't know. I hope you're happy. I hope that uh, whatever happens tonight, you don't get too crazy. You know, hug your family members. You know, just look, nothing ever changes 100%. I mean, a little bit it does, but not too much. Just let's calm down, and no matter who wins – Let's try and do better. That's all. Yep. Is that okay to say? That's great. All right. Well, I think we did a good job. Um, I'm back on the road. I did, like I said, I did Toledo. I got another gig coming up in Charleston, South Carolina, November 20th. But for all of my tour dates, if you go to johnreap.com, you can click on tour dates. And you can see all of my tour dates are right there. But if you want to help this podcast grow – and get better, go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on support. That's our Patreon page. Become a supporter. I'm still doing cameos. Ginger Beard Man, still available. Amazon Prime. Ginger Payne, still on YouTube. Um, I think we wrapped this puppy up. What do you think there, Sebastian? Let's do it. For intern Isaiah, Omar, the Alan Jackson, and Sebastian, my name is John Reap. Bicycle! Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a bike and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your self park cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle It ain't number one, it's right in the middle The town's not big, but it ain't too little It's time for Country Ish Hey everybody, it's me again I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be, it's real simple Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on support and thank you.